Cirque du Soleil was a strange but critical part of Old Vegas and Old Vegas culture since it became a staple of Vegas shows back in the 1990s. But with the severe changes on the strip since March of 2020, can Cirque du Soleil survive in a modern Vegas? Let's find out. Is the ace of Vegas, the ace of Vegas. Hey there, Spinners and Sharks, Ace of Vegas here, and I hope you're doing well. So I'm sure at this point you guys have already heard that two of the most popular Cirque du Soleil shows, Mystere and O, are going to be returning to Vegas this summer as Vegas potentially goes back up to 100% capacity. So now that we're going to be able to see the first Cirque du Soleil shows that we've seen in over a year, it got me thinking, does Cirque du Soleil still have what it takes to survive in Las Vegas after a pandemic? Let's talk about that a little bit. So to answer that question, we need to discuss a few things. Mostly, where Cirque was before the pandemic. Despite the fact that it had several successful shows running, Cirque wasn't exactly doing gangbusters on the numbers. In fact, according to the Las Vegas Review Journal, they were easily up to about a billion dollars in debt. Also, they had made some mistakes with their shows as well. I'll probably make a full video about this someday if you guys want me to. The best way to let me know about that is by leaving a like on this video and commenting that you want a video on Run down below. But here's the short version. Run opened to mediocre reviews and never picked up momentum, becoming the first failed Cirque show in recent memory for Las Vegas, meaning that even if Sislak hadn't canceled Vegas, Cirque and MGM were going to cancel Run anyway. So there's that. Secondly, let's get back up to the financials. Because of poor performance prior to the pandemic, so that three times fast, Cirque really couldn't sustain itself during the Las Vegas shutdown of 2020 anyway. Cirque laid off nearly everybody that worked there, approximately 95% of the workforce, and still had a billion dollars in debt to deal with. While all of that wasn't due to shows failing, failed shows certainly didn't help. Run alone ended up costing the company $65 million in losses just for existing. So it's no surprise that Cirque ended up filing for bankruptcy in June of 2020. Now, filing for bankruptcy doesn't always spell doom for a company. A famous example would be Caesars. Caesars had survived and thrived under new leadership after declaring bankruptcy in 2015. It wasn't easy, but they pulled through. Cirque could feasibly have done the same thing after a very long uphill battle anyway. Now, luckily, since then, things have changed for Cirque du Soleil. They found creditors to inject them with a fresh cash transplant to keep them afloat, and the acrobats and other performers are back in good shape. The casinos that hosted these shows will likely be encouraging more ticket sales, and Governor Sisolak is lifting restrictions on shows and gatherings in the coming months. So it seems that Cirque du Soleil might be flying high again. But hang on a minute. Once again, remember, Cirque was not in good shape before the shutdown. I've probably said it three times in a row now that they were in debt to the tune of a billion dollars American before March of 2020. So if Cirque really wants to avoid these issues, what should they do in the New Vegas? Well, I'm no expert, but I do have a couple general common sense ideas from a consumer standpoint that would get me back into the seats personally. Number one is to refresh the audience. It's no secret that Cirque du Soleil has a bit of a niche audience. They've often gravitated towards educated, upper-middle-class markets with very little focus on the family market or children. And for a while, that made a lot of sense. Ringling Brothers was still in full swing in the 80s and 90s, and they really started gathering ire for their maltreatment of animal attractions. Cirque was different. No animals, no circus peanuts, no silly tents. It was a grown-up, sophisticated alternative to the family circus. Not that family circus, the, that one. There, there it is. Instead of soda, you drank wine. Instead of t-shirts, you wore button-ups. Even the clowns had style and attitude about them. It was fancy, it was foreign, it was fresh. But now, some 30 odd years later, the concept is pretty standard. The shows are a staple, and everyone's been to one at this point. They need to draw on a new audience to pull this off. And that actually brings us into idea number two. Bring in new, more diverse shows. This one's a bit of a personal one, but I found that for the most part, Cirque du Soleil shows look a lot the same. It's a lot of high-flying acrobats and technicolor tights. It's not inherently a bad thing, but it can certainly offer the impression that once you've seen one Cirque show, you've seen them all. Now, Cirque has tried this with new shows like Run and Failed, sadly, but I think Run went a little too off-brand. 
but it has seen success in shows like Zumanity, which ran for 17 years and was honestly my favorite of the Cirque du Soleil shows. I think clarifying that there are specifically family-friendly shows, adult shows, and more artsy shows might diversify the crowds a bit and in turn allow more types of shows to appear. And finally, idea number three. Split up the hotels. Right now, Cirque du Soleil shows are mostly exclusively performed at MGM properties in Las Vegas. Probably for a good reason, but for the life of me, I have no idea what it is. Mysterious at Treasure Island, the only non-MGM hotel hosting a Cirque residency. But I feel as though Caesars, Wynn, Planet Hollywood, and Venetian could easily host a Cirque show, and that competition might encourage the hotels to drop their rent. With that, or the threat of MGM monopolizing again, it could possibly help Zurich reduce costs without losing out on the creativity they cherish so much. And they could even tune shows at specific properties and crowds, tying all three of these ideas back up into one neat little package, potentially saving the French Canadian circus for many years to come. All right, Spinners and Sharks, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's editorial, I'd appreciate a like, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. That said, how would you save Cirque du Soleil if you were in the driver's seat? Do you like my ideas, or do you have some of your own? Whatever your thoughts may be, I'd love to hear about them in the comments down below. Until next time, though, this is Ace of Vegas, signing out and wishing you all strong hands, and, of course, happy spinning, you guys. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva